ridiculous. Evidence from Hodgins and Flesh for Cam. Now, the bomber said something about answering the call. What do you think that means? Mm. Many terrorists feel they're acting upon divine instruction. I don't think it was a terrorist, I just think it was a bank robber. It was spatter on the back of your collar. Spatter. Okay. Oh, I can take my answer. No, nope, don't. Uh-huh. You'll compromise the evidence. Right. I'm having Christmas dinner at my place this year with my dad. Considering you've been shunted aside by your own family, I'd like to invite you. It's a sweet invitation. So, will you come? I don't know. I was thinking about going up to Quebec to see Parker. I really don't care about Rebecca thinks. If you do that, won't you retaliate by insisting upon coming to all your special times with Parker? Yeah. You have the perfect chromium. Stand up. Oh, what is there stuff on my pants? Yeah, vascular tissue on your cocky belt buckle. Oh, right. Slides right off. We're done. Nope. I'll have to remove your pants. All right, you know, I'm just going to start reciting some saints, St. Joseph, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. John. Anyone from mistletoe? I'm recovering evidence. Just evidence, that's all. Interesting. Listen, uh, Bob. You can sit. There's something in your hair. Where? Oh, don't touch. What? Organic residue. I'll cut it out. What do you mean, cut it out? No, no scissors, not the hair. Tox results show that our bomber had propranolol in his bloodstream. It's a beta blocker popular with performers, soldiers, and suicide bombers. Yeah, snipers use that to calm your nerves. Also, Hodgins swabbed this. Found high concentrations of limonene. It's a citrus fruit derivative. Oh, what is that, a nostril? Yep, and I have no idea how the limonene got there, unless the guy was snorting orange Kool-Aid. All right, listen, boss, I really gotta get going to question this other eyewitness. Will you just... Ow! Are we doing experiments on Booth? Because if so, I'd like to help. Make fun of the naked guy. Knock yourself out. I think we got everything. Oh, no. Mandible fragment. Just get it all out. Oh, Agent Booth. You look... Wow. How are you? Finished with the hair, moving on to the hands. And thank you for asking, especially given the difficult warning you've had. He was speaking to Ms. Hartmeyer. Oh. I'm not used to having evidence that talks, so it's a little disconcerting. I'll just get back to work. Mm-hmm. How much longer do I have to stay? Questions. Do you remember how long you were standing outside the bank? Uh, I'm not sure. I was waiting for the bus. I remember seeing Santa go into the bank. Ow! Oh, sorry, it's being stubborn. All I know is I was minding my own business, and this guy just blew up in front of me. Dr. Bannon, oh, look at these white fragments in the nail bed. Most likely dental, Paul. Santa tea. Oh, jeez. Harvest the nail. Just a quick clip. Hey, Booth. Yeah. Yeah, I got something here. Oh, great. Join the party. Where's your chest hair? I'm highly evolved. His pubic extension is entirely within normal. Enough. Okay, so what do you got? Cataloging bomb components so we can run it through EXIS. The explosive incident system. Bomb maker signatures are as unique as handwriting. We found this computer chip that sets frequency on a two-way radio, which means this bomb was command-initiated, triggered via electronic signal from the two-way. All right, that would explain the crackle I heard right before the bomb went off. It was just... You know, if Santa had a partner, he was probably monitoring that frequency. Oh, he hears me say FBI, he panics, and he blows up good old Saint Nick, but there's no way to trace it back to him. Well, except for that computer chip. The radio was set to 27.4 megahertz. There's no scanner around here. She will never get enough once she gets a little touch. If I had it my way, you know that I'd make a say.